Hello and welcome to a new episode of Blender Developer Sneak Peek. My name is Thomas Beck and I'd like to present you in this series new features that are uh, already in Trunk, in Blender Trunk, and that are coming to Blender 2.7 and beyond. So let's start. It's episode 2 and we're talking a bit about a new modifier, the wireframe modifier. We're really proud to present this modifier to you now because we worked quite a long time on it and even though Campbell rewrote and uh, changed it a bit in the end we consider it as our baby. So let us know what you're doing with it, let us know how you think about it and uh, happy planning. So let's start with the modifier and look what it can do. As always, you'll find this modifier in the uh, modifier tab under the generate modifiers. So let's add one and what the modifier does is it generates a wireframe from your model. So in this case it's very easy, but if you choose to uh, wireframe Suzanne, then it will be even better looking. Based is the modifier on the um, B mesh operator wireframe. So if you change to edit mode and um, enter the wireframe keyword, then you'll find almost the same actions and settings as the um, modifier has. But I uh, introduced a few more settings and a few more things, like you can see here the crease weight um, feature that is also available in the wireframe, mod uh, wireframe operator now. But let's now concentrate on the modifier and therefore we add a new one and as you maybe have seen there we don't have an icon yet for the wireframe modifier but I already drew one. Um, it's going to be in there by the end of the next week I think. And here you can see some options like changing the thickness will change the wires and when we are um, subsurfing this this uh, cube even more by one or two subdivisions and you change crease edges and the crease weight then you'll see first first you'll see nothing but then if you are correcting the order of the modifier because it's evaluated from top to bottom then you'll see oh, okay this is doing the crease like this and if you increase the subdivisions even more then you'll see even better what the crease is doing like this and then you'll see how powerful this modifier is because you can do very very organic forms like spider webs and so on with simple simple meshes and that is really cool we think and that is all dynamic because it's a modifier and if you'd like to you could also define a, a new material for the wires like in this example I'm, I'm creating a new one for as a, as a base material let's name it like that and a new one for the wires Let's name this uh, generated material and yeah, we'll give them a pink color and a greenish color so to make it more distinctive from each other. And when we change the material offset then you'll see that all the wires are now, um, are now drawn with the material 1 and all the others the originals are drawn with the um, with the green material but as we ticked the replace original checkbox we won't see the original yet and now we'll uh, see that okay there is an original mesh still and we can uh, toggle it on and off 
via a simple option in the modifier. So that's another feature from the modifier that is uh, animatable too. So the next thing I'd like to show you is um, a fairly ad advanced feature because that was not available in the Beamish operator um, earlier and that is the interaction with vertex groups and therefore I'd like to show you how you can do this dynamically via the dynamic paint um, via dynamic paint uh, feature you could do that also only with the modifiers then you would use the uh, approximate weight modifier vertex weight modifier but let's do it with dynamic paint that's very picturesque I think because you can see directly what is um, causing the change of the weights and this is fairly basic what I'm doing now it's just uh, defining the, the uh, mode of the brush and the canvas from the dynamic paint and I animate this brush so it goes over the monkey and when it does then the vertex weight weights are set appropri appropriately. Let's change that to wireframe so you can see how it's changing. And as you see, it's work uh, see it's working pretty nice. And now we're doing the same thing with an activated wireframe modifier but we're choosing the DP weight, that's the group that the um, dynamic paint uh, is, is affecting. We're setting the thickness a bit lower and are replacing the origi original mesh knot. So we will have an, a wire overlay over our mesh and as it is touching this mesh now, you see that the wire frames are generated on the fly and let's reduce the thickness even more so we can see that. And that's working really cool and is very useful for motion graphics animations where you'd like to have your mesh dynamic, uh, dynamically generated wire frame and that's working with Blender and Cycles 2. There is no need to set it definitely to Blender Render or to Cycles Render either. Just choose one and do as you like to 